Good day, y'all, and welcome back. On this episode, I will be redrawing a few of my old, unused, and incredibly edgy characters. Here's the only one I could find with an actual original picture, unfortunately. I scoured my endless stacks of paper, but couldn't find the other two. I do apologize for that. So we're going to start off with that first character that you saw just back there. Her name might surprise you. It's actually the Queen of Light. And I know that's not a real name, but I never got around to uh, giving her an actual real name. Partially because the story was just terrible, and secondly, I was a lazy small child who didn't care about giving my characters proper titles. Now, her role as the Queen of Light was just to control every aspect of what you see. She was <laughs> incredibly overpowered. A Mary Sue, if you will, and I don't like using that term much. But for my own characters, I will make an exception. She was, in fact, a Mary Sue. And adding to the fact that she was a Mary Sue, she didn't even do anything with that power. Basically, her entire role in the story was just to come up for a few brief seconds and say, hey, I'm the queen. And then, like, the main characters, who I believe were kids, are just like, oh, cool, that's neat. Bye, I guess. <laughs> anyway, basically, this character was immensely overpowered. Um, she doesn't even take responsibility for her power. She just kind of, like, shows up for a brief two seconds, makes this cool little light display that the kids are like, whoa, that's so neat, and then kind of just leaves. <laughs> just leaves, and you pretty much never hear from her again until two pages later where she gets sick and dies. I have a very strange obsession. I think the main problem with this character was that she was basically a self-insert. And self-insert stories, they're not always terrible. There are some very good self-insert stories I've read before. Um, if they're like really well-written, if the character actually does things, um, then it can turn out to be a very engaging story. And like I think self-inserts, they bring a lot of character because this is a real person. But... This was coming from the mind of a edgy th um, 13 year old with a unquenchable thirst for power. So I was just like, so what's, what's the most power I could possibly give myself? Oh, I know, light. That's pretty cool. But looking back on this character, I realized that there was so much I could have done with her character. I mean, like light covers a lot of ground, like, Things reflect light, the, they emit light, there are different kinds of light, like fluorescent, bioluminescent, chemiluminescent. There's so much, there's so much I could have done with this character, and I, now, looking back on her, I see her as a real wasted opportunity. I mean, like, yes, she is very overpowered, and, you know, all characters need a weakness, but still, um... The fact that she has control over light, you know, it's just, I find it, like, it could have been really cool if I just put the effort into making the character more engaging. If I had just given her a little more depth aside from my weird personality with the, like, I don't really want to do anything today. Let's amuse the kids for two seconds and then let's go die so we don't need to do anything else. It's like... That's not how that works. That's not how you write a good story. I mean, like, if you really wanted to kill a character at the very beginning of the story, it needs to have some sort of impact along the way. Otherwise, it's just a few paragraphs of waste. And you don't need that to make a story good. The number of pages does not matter. So I realized just now that we're kind of going on a scale from least edgy to most edgy. Um, so I guess here you go. Second most edgy character, which just so happens to actually be three characters. So uh, these ones also don't have names either. Um, so let's just go left to right and uh, mix him up. Uh, that one on the right there is Bethica, the one in the middle is Shannon, and the one on the right is... Um, Chloe. Yeah, there we go. 
Oh boy, what's their shallow story? Um, well, believe it or not, they're actually mutants of some sort. Uh, never explains why they're mutants, uh, but, you know, that would be a fun little tidbit of information. I mean, that also leaves a lot of, uh, open ground for some interesting information. Why are they mutants? Are they happy with being mutants? Actually, I answered that question, and the answer is <laughs> no. No, their lives are completely miserable. They're constantly bullied at school because of their, uh, as you'll see in a second, very strange heads. Um, so, you know, they wear, like, gloves and constantly wear their hoods on with, like, their drawstrings pulled so no one sees their faces. Um, which really kind of makes me question why they were sent to a public school and not just homeschooled. But back then, I saw it as, well, I go to a public school, so let's make these three go to a public school as well. But I suppose the story wouldn't be as interesting if I just <laughs> just made them homeschooled where nothing bad ever happened and it was just a great time for them. But a story needs a conflict, and that conflict starts one day at school when a nasty small child, probably in their class, uh, comes up to them and just starts beating up the big one because I guess she's more of a threat than the other two are. Um, but basically the other two get all defensive and they're like, hey, leave our sister alone, you nasty. And, uh, well, nasty small child doesn't back down, of course. So the three, being as cat-like as you can see right there, pull out their, take off their gloves take out their claws, show their faces to everyone. They're all horrified and start tearing apart this poor little kid. Um, as you can see, I was obviously very mad at someone at the time and probably projected some of their personality onto the small child whom st these three are currently tearing apart. Anyway, out of nowhere comes the SWAT team <laughs> and they... Uh, shoot the three girls with tranquilizer darts and take them to this secret government base where uh, it is explained to them that uh, their transformation is the fault of some evil dude who is not even important. And that uh, actually, his notes uh, gave us a little bit of information about these gals. Uh, they're actually extremely useful. Uh, they have, uh, apparently super speed, and, um, well, they're just, they're the best, okay? That's all you need to know. These three are the best not-furries around. Anyway, long story short, these three are going to be turned into government weapons to, uh, I guess for the first one, sneak around and listen in on people, be a spy, basically. Second one is for combat, because she's big and buff. And then the third one, she's completely useless. I just wanted to have three of them, because I may or may not have been influenced by Alvin and the Chipmunks at the time. Ugh. Out of all the trios on popular media, I had to choose that one. But anyway, the story never um, had anything else aside from being pulled aside and say, hey, you're useful. And, you know, that's a little bit disappointing because, like, as kind of cringy as these three are, I think I actually could have made something quite interesting out of them. Got to admit, like, not a lot of people in the uh, YA category that I would have tried to aim for would have liked this kind of stuff. But, you know, could have had a fan base at one point if I had just been willing to put in the effort like the last one. But no, I had to uh, just create these characters so I felt a little bit better about myself. I was a very insecure little kid, and I felt very powerless because... I am, still to this day, and was, a massive pushover. I think most of these stories revolved around me just wanting to have a little bit of power over my peers. On to the final and most edgy character. This little child is actually quite small because she's in only second grade. Anyway, she was part of one of the most useless studies ever performed. Uh, <laughs> 
She was used to see the similarities between human blood and T-Rex blood. Why this small child? <laughs> I don't know. And secondly, where are they even getting T-Rex blood? <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not gonna go, like, all Jurassic Park on you, but, like, I'm gonna go all Jurassic Park on you when I say that I was influenced by Jurassic Park at this time. Anyway, let's just push aside all those massive plot holes. Um, basically now whenever she squeezes her arm, which is apparently where all the T-Rex blood gathers, uh, because <laughs> those silly scientists injected her with freaking T-Rex blood, uh, whenever she squeezes her arm, she turns into a T-Rex and has no control over her mind. So basically, um, she is bullied quite a bit at school, I guess, and, uh, whenever she, like, puts her hand on her arm and, like, threatens to squeeze it, all the bullies are like, oh no, better stop. And guess what? There's nothing else about the story other than that. Which, you know, not surprising. I don't think it's a very interesting story myself. I don't think it could have really gone anywhere outside of the fact that she's a T-Rex kiddo. But it's because of stories like this that I have a final product for an actually pretty good story nowadays. I have my very good friends to help me with it, and um, yeah, it's gonna be a really fun time. If it weren't for characters like these, I would not have gotten the storyline that I have today. To put it in simpler terms, what I'm basically saying here is that when you're young, you're going to have some very strange characters. And that's only going to help you improve over the years. Like drawing, storytelling does require a lot of time to get good at. I'm still getting there. Um, but, you know, make your cringy characters. Make them, love them, and cherish them for the rest of your life. Because they're going to be there to remind you that they were the part of the reason that you've gotten so far. Don't let anyone tell you different. These are my cringy characters, and you know, I love them. But you always need to remember to keep developing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Storytime Sketching, and I will see you probably next Saturday. Goodbye, everyone. Love y'all.